Hey, hey, here we go. Happy Monday. You having a good day? Getting started today? You watching me live or you you hooked in a little bit later? Or are you watching this on our website or YouTube? Huh? Sometimes I even put these on Facebook. We'll see. People on Facebook tend to like this, the shorter videos a little bit better, so I don't always put these on Facebook. I might put some of these on Facebook today. We'll see. I want to talk to you right now about... I look all right? My entourage is not here. I have to look good for you people. I want to talk to you today about how to eliminate storms in your life. How to eliminate storms in your life. And you got anything going on? Any any fussing going on? We call it fussing. Fussing. People are fussing. People, you know, things flare up at work. A crisis. That's called a storm. Anything going on? Anything going on that we can help you with? Because I know how to eliminate storms in your life. I get rid of them. Let me show you a little story here. It's in Matthew chapter 8. It's in a couple places. But Matthew chapter 8 is one place it's at. Let's see which account we want to look at here. Matthew 8, verse 23. Jesus entered a ship and his disciples followed him. And uh, let's look at the, at the, at, let's try Mark chapter, it's in Mark chapter 4 too. I think that might be a little better. Mark 4. Je this is after Jesus is talking about the parable of the sower. And then he says, let's go over to the other side of the lake, of the sea. And when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him and put him in a ship with them. And there arose a great storm. Mark chapter 4. There it is. There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, and it was now full. And Jesus was in the back of the ship, sleeping on a pillow. And they woke him up and said, Master, don't you care that we're going to perish? Now, here they are in this ship and the storm comes up the storm comes up and they woke him up he's sleeping in the back on this big pillow mattress of some kind and they woke him up and they said don't you care that we're going to perish And so Jesus woke up, he, he got up, and he, he said, well, he said, let's try something. He said, let's, let's put our heads into the wind and, and bail out the boat and, and we'll just, we'll fight our way through this. No, that's not what happened. Am I wrong? I'm wrong. Jesus didn't do that at all. He did not say, let's fight our way through the storm. He did not say, let's try something. Let's do this, or let's do that, or let's try, let's try this, or let's try this, or, and, and, and we, you got to bear up under the storms of life. That's what the pious preachers, you got to hold your head up high and bear up under the storms and the great trials that God sends to you to test you. Roar, 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 roar. I've heard a lot of that. Huh? How many of you know that's a bunk? Jesus didn't do any of that. He stood up. And he said to the storm, 
stop. Peace be still means stop. Peace. He spoke peace in the middle of a storm. What are you speaking in the middle of your storm? I guarantee you, I'm not trying this and I'm not trying that and I'm not looking here and looking there. No, no, no. Look at this. He said, peace be still. And the wind stopped and there was a great calm. How did Jesus deal with this storm? Now, this storm that they're out there in, I don't know if you've ever been out uh, on the sea. I, I was in the Gulf of Mexico one time when this storm came up. Years and years ago, I was long, long time ago. I was on a, on a big fishing boat, charter fishing boat, and a storm came up. And I mean to tell you, I've, I had never seen anything like this. But we had a strong, strong boat, a good sized boat, and we had a very experienced captain and crew. And this captain, he turned that boat into, into, the, into the storm and just give it all the juice. And he, he got us out of that storm. But it was very frightening. But everybody was pretty calm because you could see the the, the captain up there in the wheelhouse and he did not even look concerned. So the fact that he was not concerned had a very calming effect on all the passengers. He didn't seem to be too concerned. If he'd have been running around crying and screaming, we'd have been a little nervous. And I wasn't even saved yet, so I didn't know anything about any of this. But he fought his way through that storm. And he made it. He had faith that he could get through that storm. He, he, he knew he could do that. He didn't seem to be too worried. Jesus did not fight his way through the storm. He spoke to it. He said, stop. Peace. Be still. The Bible says he rebuked the storm. Question is, can that storm hear? The spirit that was causing that storm could sure hear. Amen. He spoke to it. He didn't fight his way through it. Are you fighting your way through storms of life or are you speaking to them? Big difference. Huge difference. Years ago, I decided I am not going to fight my way through any more storms. Now, there's four levels of faith. If you're in a small boat, and you're out in the middle of a sea or a lake or a large lake or whatever, and a big storm comes up. And the man with no faith out there in that little boat, he'll drown. Boat will be capsized, he'll drown. The man with a little bit of faith might make it. He might survive. The man with faith, he will put his head down. He will turn that boat into the wind. He will row for all he's worth. He will bail the water out of that boat and he will fight his way through that storm until he come, until it calms down and he comes out. He will make it if he has faith. The man or person with great faith will tell the storm to stop and it will stop. Four levels of faith. Great faith speaks the word only. Jesus said that in Matthew chapter 8, the story of the centurion. The centurion said, Lord, he says, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Jesus said, that is great faith. I haven't seen such great faith in all of Israel. That was great faith. Great faith speaks the word only. I am taking the people my partners and the people in my church to the point where they can speak the word only. You don't have to fight your way through these storms. You can speak to these storms. I have had some incredible storms pop up in my life 
with me and my family. I don't fight my way through it. I speak to it. It goes away. Some of them I'm not even going to tell you about were so incredible that involved people I loved. Stop. I said, stop. And it stopped. I said, stop. In the name of Jesus, stopped. Amen. <clears throat> I'm telling you, you don't have to fight your way through this crap. Glory to God. I can do that for you. If you're a partner with this ministry, <clears throat> I will speak to the storms in your life. You know, our partners are the people of my church. Anytime a storm pops up, they call. Amen. They'll call me and I'll speak to their storm and it goes away and they're, they're good to go. I'm telling you people, it's just that simple. You partner with this ministry, or if you come to my church, you don't fight your way through any more storms. You call me, I will combine my faith with yours. We will speak to that storm or I'll speak to it for you and we'll get rid of it. Because there is so much power in the name of Jesus. Jesus, when he stood up in that boat, he had the power to calm that storm. When he left this earth, he gave us his name to use. He said, you can do anything I, can, I did. Whatever I do, you can do also. And he gave us his name. I can calm the storm. I have literally calmed a huge storm so that we could get across the lake and get to our camp. I did that with my son when we were in fishing in Canada. And that storm stopped. And the sun came out. We got, and my son looked at me like, because this storm was going on and it looked like it was, there was no end in sight. I said, in the name of Jesus, you stop right now so we can get across the lake. And within 10 minutes, it was totally stopped. I said, let's go. And he looked at me like, who is this guy? The disciples looked at Jesus and said, who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? He's the son of God and the son of man and we and he told us we can do what he did and he gave us his name to do it with so i'm not fighting my way through storms why should i i got the name of jesus he gave it to me to use and said hey use this for the storms in your life i said okay and it works how simple is that don't fight your way through these storms go to my website increasenow.com Hook up with me, become a partner with this ministry, or if you're in the Melbourne, Florida area, come to our church. I'll keep the storms out of your life. There is that much power in the name of Jesus. We do it all the time. It's routine. I tell people, I know this is a big deal to you, but it's routine for us. Sickness was a big deal in Jesus' day, but it was routine for him. He took care of it. Glory to God. Power. In the name of Jesus will calm the storms in your life. But you got to find somebody who has that kind of faith to do it. We do. Amen. Hey, go to my website, increasenow.com. Listen to all these messages in there. All that is free. Just listen and listen and listen. And when you decide you want to become a partner with this ministry, then you will have access to me. Glory to God. Hey, make it a great day today. And remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills, as well as calming all the storms in your life.